start off actually with uh, the folks who won uh, the uh, first round of Hackathon, which uh, is, you guys still going with uh, Firecrack Finder? Oh, yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> Uh, it's going to find the nearest go get out. We switch it to uh, parking garage. Why not? Sorry, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I don't mind. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I don't yeah. So, uh, well, I'll let you guys just dive into some demo. Uh, take a look at it. Yeah. I'm going to pull it up. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Ironically, we ended up uh, actually taking a ride around Chicago on Saturday with a friend who owns an actual Humvee, which uh, I think it's the only one in Chicago. So yeah, so he was, and uh, yes, I know. Sorry. Runs on biodiesel. It runs on biodiesel. Yeah, he was running biodiesel in it, and uh, apparently there are twenty, what was it, twenty-seven, or thirty-two biodiesel stations that he knows of. Within 30 miles. Within 30 miles, yeah. So um, I thought there was some delicious irony in the whole experience. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah. But um, anyway, meanwhile, we'll have to technical URL. Sure. Okay, so um, one of the things that we were trying to, uh, one of the problems we were trying to solve is that. Um, there are a lot of bike racks in the city, and, and a lot of people take that for granted. Um, and there's all sorts of problems too, um, which is kosher to, to lock your bikes up um, against. Um, but uh, it's 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 uh, data that that has been collected and recently um, distributed, pretty recently distributed. That's not what we've been at all, um, to my knowledge. Um, and so what we wanted to do is we wanted to give uh, bikers a way of finding, um, you know, the five or ten nearest bike racks to either their current location or um, a location that they like to get an address. Um, and so what we did is we built a mobile app. We pulled the data down from the city of Chicago um, GitHub repository um, and piped it into a MongoDB um, database and. And we we're, we have it running on a node backend, so we're doing geospatial queries um, through Node and Mongo to, to do this. Um, and right now, it's, it's mostly just a um, a it's it's geared towards mobile, so the styling will be a little special here, but you'll you'll see what I mean. Um, one of one of what we have right now for the prototype is. Is you can see it, it pulls up your current location marked by the green arrow, um, and it pulls up the about five nearest um, bike racks um, to that current location, and it lists them by address. Um, something that um, that happens is occasionally you'll have multiple bike racks really close to each other, so you can see multiple addresses. Looks like you can get some. This is the web version, of course. It looks differently on the iPhone. Um, um, one, one thing that we'd like to do, this is just like what we were able to hack together um, at the um, couple days that, that we were working for. Um, one thing we want to do is be able to um, be able to click on or tap on um, the address of the bike rack and have it pull up some extra information. Um, have users be able to um, to add details about the racks, like take pictures so you can see what sort of state they're in. Um, ideally, we would be able to also have the type of bike rack. Um, there's a bunch of different types that the city of Chicago employs, uh, and they're each having a uh, different capacity for the number of bikes. Um, so one, that would be a good uh, good metric to start keeping track of and, and allowing people to use because they might, you know, if there's five racks uh, nearby, they might go for the one that holds five bikes instead of the one that goes for two because they took that one depending on the time of day is probably different. Um, one of the other things that we'd like to do um, is allow for um, users to uh, input and, and be able to uh, submit new bike racks. Um, so I, um, one thing that's, that's available, like right now we have about 5,100 records for bike racks, but I think there's actually closer to 12,000 um, bike racks that are actually available in the city of Chicago, so there's a big gap in what we have um, in terms of data and what actually exists. Uh, so, so one way to bridge that gap 
is to sort of crowdsource um, the data collection. Uh, and we would do that through um, through part of the app where you'd be able to say, hey, I have, you know, I have this bike rack here, it's not included in your app, it's this kind of rack, and um, and, uh, and then and then that would go up as a user submitted bike rack, and then um, over time other users might might see this and, and it's not official yet, so you know it's not a, it's not city data yet. Um, so they would go in and see, oh, well, well, one person or two people can vouch for this bike rack. The more people who actually uh, verify that this rack exists, um, the more likely it is to actually be able to Another thing that we were potentially, um, uh, well, one, of, one of the problems to address is that, uh, is that some, some bike racks, well, so, so if you have the bike racks and the uh, um, poles, which are fine, the, to um, log your bike up to. Um, but some of the poles have been altered in ways that make it easier to save your bike. Um, and Patrick let us know that we were called sucker poles. I didn't know about this concept until after this weekend and it's hyper attenuated to bike racks and poles for the next week and a half. Uh, since then, I've seen three or four sucker poles that have been like, totally pulled out. They're, um, the bolt at the bottom of the base has been undone, or the signs have been taken off the top, and all I see is a bolt and like rock. No bike. So. <laughs> and that, I think that ties into your uh, question earlier about crime, because I think some of the real value of this is when you combine data sets and, and bringing in the crime data. I mean, maybe some bike rack is actually a honeypot for. Stealing bikes, yeah. and I don't see why that information shouldn't also be part of this. I think that would be exciting to actually bridge the city's concerns. Yeah, so that, that would actually be a nice matchup there, like, um, um, and, and it would allow people to, you could then get a heat map for a particular rack or for a particular area, like square block radius, like, um, out of the blue, my girlfriend's bike got stolen. On Randolph Street last night, so now I'm like, okay, well, really? then, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, it's like, like, make sure to report it, and then we'll get that data in, and then if anybody else was kind of locked in, like, would you know, do that to spur us on? Well, she should have had a bike spike. <laughs> a bike spike, yeah. It's a new Kickstarter that was fully funded. And it's a little. It's going to be. It's designed in Chicago, and it's a little GPS that you put in your bike or hide somewhere on the bike, and uh, you can track your bike after it's stolen. It's two hundred fifty bucks, right? Um, it was one hundred and fifty if you backed it early. <laughs> 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 so apparently, there's a lot of interest in this. That's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So how can how can you all tie this into sustainability? Can you? you know, Encourage people to ride more. Um, yeah, where, where's where's the sustainability? Point? Well, so so one thing um, one thing there is that is that Chicago is trying to be a bike friendly city, um, and so one way of letting people know, especially when bikers know that Chicago is actually a bike friendly city, like we have all the bike lanes now, but letting getting an accurate number on how many bike racks there actually are. Um, and uh, and we're hoping that if if people realize how easy it is to and, and safe it is to get from one place to another, and then they don't have to worry about where they put their bike, then that'll that that will um, dissuade them from driving where they might, uh, and that'll be better for the environment. And be better for the yeah, I think there are some uh, record keeping considerations too in terms of the safety of a site. How compliant it is, how progressive it is in terms of um, providing resources for bicyclists. And I think also that uh, part of the interest of being this project isn't just about bike racks. It's a, it'll be a reference implementation of a project that's about documenting civic assets. So, um, And I think the bike rack one is particularly interesting because of what John mentioned earlier, which is that what you have, one have to ask what is a bike rack when Tom mentioned that there's a uh, Fence that runs how long? I don't know how long. Yeah, there's miles of fence that's technically bike racks along the ocean. So, not the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Bless it. I'm not from there. <laughs> anyway, um, so how do you how do you account for that for, for planters that could be used as bike racks? And I feel like if you can you can handle that 
challenge, figure out how to categorize this thing into a data set. Things that are less ambiguous uh, will be uh, easier. It's, it's, it's going to be an easier progression in that direction. So uh, that doesn't really address the sustainability issue. But, but on that note, it, somehow this leads to a way to help document the uh, what is the proper name for the bike lanes that are yeah, protected bike lane. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> I don't know how to it, but uh, but but uh, if if this can be extended eventually, or this type of thing can be extended to uh, just make available to people all kinds of bicycle and biking related resources, then then that's awesome beyond just the bike ride, right? including the crime data. And so, yeah, uh, the for the M two four six board, and we had a million dollars of these special money to, to be spent. This would be perfect for, for I think five words out of um, where to best spend that money. So bike racks and bicycle that's on the agenda, we need to know where to put it and this is exactly what we need. Right. So one one that's a good point. One thing that we had talked about um, at the hackathon was potentially allowing for people to actually check in to particular bike racks. Um, it's not like you. It's not like a check-in, check-out system, but just to let um, let us know that I am using this rack, and then the next person who comes along and says, "I'm," you know, they say that they're using that bike rack, and then we start getting numbers on the usage. And not only would it let you know um, that you need to maybe install some new bike racks, but it would uh, guide your decision as to where. Good times in the four square. Say again. Four squares are going to be the value. Oh, yeah. There you go, and then you just check into this. I have to say that the crime angle is interesting too. One of our direct comments from the community was, you know, crime, bike crime, like deters bike. You know, just a simple statement like that. And so, you know, understanding where that, where these, you know, these funny thoughts are. Also, it just yeah. crossed my mind. Maybe certain types of racks that are more uh, that you would already know this are prevent bike theft or. Certain ones. Oh, you need certain kinds of racks and to prevent bike theft. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. So the city installs are really good. And oh, okay. that private and uh, empty install and not so good. Okay. The so camera CTA just uses the city ones. Um, and this is based on like the city will use square instead of round. Uh, so a pipe cutter can cut a round one, but can't cut a square one. Uh, the city uses quarter inch thick steel and those. Non city racks use like a third of that. So you could just take a hacksaw or, or even just like yank on it and it'll come out. And you tell us. I worked for the city for three years. Just part of my job was finding bike racks and finding new places. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more information out there about how community is about bike racks. System, whereas when requests come in, there are kind of links to nearby requests, so we can kind of look at one intersection and everybody's in request. 
requests that kind of show up within a radius of that intersection so that you know go there in one part of the day and not have to revisit that location 10 times over that month. Um, but yeah, it just seems like since that's like an official process, that might be like a more like efficient way to get the main data rather than like go to square check and kind of require audience to get to go around. I mean, that's the real challenge with that. Would be in the but if there's already something that has people using it and there's an actual like process that can run the city, it seems like Right, yeah, this would definitely be more for like explicit requests. The other other data would be collected more like for implicit like after the fact, mm -hmm. like see what, what the traffic is like. Hey, maybe I can get you guys to help me push the city to get three one open three one one to have a bike craft request code. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, just something to, to keep in mind as someone who rides their bike around probably too much. Um, if I have to probably look for a bike rack, that's a, I don't know. If you, that's probably a problem if, if that makes sense. Because I just want to, if you know, and Chicago is really great for all the uh, bike lanes it has. But if, that's the whole point is so you can just kind of get on your bike, go somewhere, and then just park instead of like, okay, I got to get my U lock out and my phone out and find. You know what I'm saying? Like for planning a trip, it makes total sense. Now, if if you do the thing where you track the crime records of thefts to bike racks, so you can tell me what bike racks not to look at. That's right. something I would look up in 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 the but it, but in the course of like being a convenient transit option, if there's an app that has to show me where to lock up a bike, that means it's probably not a bike rack near common place. It's kind of a day to day. Kind of thing. Well, theoretically, we could capture when people make a request from their front who's standing on an empty corner with their bike rack. Uh, yeah, like I mean, that, that, be, that makes yeah, total sense, right? Yeah, if, uh, yeah. so many people have. Can't find one at this spot. Oh, yeah. That's that itself is useful. That's okay. that's like yeah. Acid. Yeah. yeah. Like, you would be able to talk about yeah. And I think that but my part of my excitement with this is to, to create to help create a framework that then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, needs to be extended out for all kinds of resources, whatever besides like that. You know, doing things like that, figuring out where people are asking for things, and um, there's all kinds of potential communities out there. I just wanted to make a comment because someone else was asking how it's uh, to sustainability. And I it came to learn uh someone was asking about the time data. To me this seems like a quality of life. I have a broader sense, uh, definition of sustainability that it's more it includes quality of life and something like this could be an enhancement of the quality of life that yeah. Yeah. yeah, I understand. It's kind of talk about it's livable, competitive, sustainable, and those things go together. So I can get all excited about like, carbon emission reduction from budget. It's really about it's attracting place for people to live. And this is part of that overall picture. Well, Chicago is a huge city for biking. Like I just got here last last year, and throughout the course of last summer, I saw all these Friday bike rides, and like I mean, it's a huge bike community. Um, and so it would also be it's, it's also a really great place to test out this sort of Sort of data, making this data available to how big it is and how enthusiastic the bikers are. Um, and ideally, maybe it could also spread into um, like other large metropolitan areas you know, like, that offer like data, like my graph data, like San Francisco and New York, and maybe getting them on board. Yeah, you mentioned, I forget if you mentioned this, uh, Tom was mentioning also that there might be a need to standardize bike. The code for America Brigade is in a number of different cities, and that's one of the things that uh, we bounce around is data standardizations. Uh, Tom Campare's uh, flu shot app. Uh, actually inspired standardizing flu shot data so that more cities can adopt that app. And so I think there's similar lines there. Awesome. Yeah, there's a couple uh, examples of apps flying in the same direction. It's fantastic. Yeah. 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 It's great. Yeah. Yeah. So if you just grab the platform a little bit, it's a, it's a I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert. I work for open science, but it's a different set of things. I can't explain in detail, other than the fact that it is a sort of crowdsourcing platform. 
inside of the whole default text of information units, for example. So the city uses it for bike sharing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's why I thought of it, is because I know they're working with the city here in some capacity. Right. That's awesome. Here's a question about this. One of the questions I ask a lot is about recycling. So this is a huge topic in Chicago. And it's, and it's handled in different ways in different kinds of buildings. So the example is larger multi-use buildings that have 10, 20, 100 apartments. But all those are recycling inside. Some of them don't. Has anybody gone and collected which buildings offer great recycling and which ones don't? I'm not going to ask. But they're supposed to all do it, but a lot of them yeah. aren't offered. Right. Mine is not. Hey, so that's starting with one. Is that yeah. a three on one? Like, Topic, does that exist already, or could we add it? Like, uh, if my building is or is isn't providing, well, it's supposed to be by law. Yeah, there's right. Yeah, but there's a mechanism for whether or not you know whether they're compliant. Who knows? Who's going to can't? But I think a good way to start getting that information is is through honestly real estate. Uh, people don't find apartments. Yeah, well, that's what I'm wondering. Yes. How could I know this is a great building? It's got fantastic recycling. Right. So I mean, that's sort of an indirect way of getting. Yeah, like people like apartmentspeople.com or people who help us for uh, uh, some of that uh, would be you know, like small, larger buildings. So you have to contract for the waste. Yeah, that would be a way to get it. And create you know, an award not. for the best building recycling. Yeah. 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 Everybody will volunteer there. This is the rollout that we're doing, but the city itself picks up single family homes that are small buildings. The large ones have to contract on their own. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and so whether it's a different recycling is part of that or not. Yeah, and they're also supposed to do it. All right, well, I think that. Uh, yeah, we should probably move on to that. Yeah, I'll just get on my own. Thanks, guys.